Though he fell just short of his third consecutive 2020 game, DeAndre Jordan still made a huge impact for the Clippers against the Spurs. Jordan scored 26 points despite making just 10 of his 28 free throw attempts. Jordan was 5 of 14 on free throws in the final period, with the Spurs instituting a Jordan in the end, though, as you know, Clippers won. But let's talk about that strategy, shall we, Stephen A? What do you think of Hack of Jordan? Well, I think it's awful. I think it's awful for the game of basketball. In no way do I fault the San Antonio Spurs or anybody from employing it, considering who we're talking about here. But it's still awful for the game. DeAndre Jordan, let me say this. He's somebody that I talk to office skip whenever I'm in the L.A. at a Clippers game. I always make sure to talk to him because I got a lot of love for him as a person and as a basketball player. I think he's incredibly athletic. He's a skywalker. Um, he's a rebounder extraordinaire. He's a shot blocker. He can defend. Uh, but at the same time, I've often said that the reason why he can't be seen as the best big man in the game is because of his free throw shooting with the exception of I believe it was the 2011 2012 season where he shot 52 and a half percent for the free throw line skip this boy has never shot better than 42 percent from the free throw line in his career this is his seventh season skip Bayless these are his numbers he shot 38.5 percent his rookie year from the free throw line 37 and a half 45 percent his third year 52 percent then it's dwindled down to 38 percent 42 percent and now it's at 40.8 percent from the free throw line that is simply god awful that's worse than will chamberlain it's worse than shaquille o'neal it's going to go down as epically bad the worst in nba history if he keeps up with this stuff to find a way to improve this and hitting just 35 percent last night 10 of 28 for the free throw line i can't fault the san antonio spurs for employing it because obviously that improves their chances of winning games but when you're able you're not even a part of the play and you're still able to just run up to a guy and foul him that's that's bad for business this is a league that changed the rules made it less physical call everything you mean you can get called for foul for passing gas for crying out loud it amazes me that in a league that has wanted to facilitate a more up-tempo pace you know basically catering the offenses at the expense of defenses to sit here and to allow this intentional fouling to take place slowing down the game and and, and turning it into a spectacle where we're forced to watch Watch DeAndre Jordan miss one free throw after another. I'm not blaming Greg Popovich or the Spurs again. I have to reiterate that point because they're doing nothing wrong. But it is something that the league needs to do something about. It's bad for basketball, and I hate it. Okay, so do you have a suggestion as to how to fix it? When you can see that folks are intentionally fouling guys away from the ball, it's one thing to foul DeAndre yeah. if he has the ball in his hands. But if you're fouling guys that have nothing to do with the play, that are away from the basketball, I think that the uh, the team that, that, you know, DeAndre Jordan's team should be allowed to pick who it wants to shoot the free throw. Yeah, I'm with you. You know, this reminds me a little bit of baseball in which you can – intentionally walk the best hitter on the other team as many times as you want to. Yeah. That's obviously trying to eliminate the other team's strength. This is taking advantage of the other team's weakness. I don't like it either. I must admit, I couldn't stop watching that game last night, even though I paid a severe price for it because my Spurs blew another late close game. But it was turned into an endless eyesore of a basketball game by Coach Popovich's strategy. And Stephen A., I'm going to disagree with you. I, I do blame Coach Popovich for the way he utilizes, or I would say overutilizes, this strategy. I think he does it to a fault. He didn't just do it in the last two or three minutes of the game, trying to get DeAndre out of the game and may force Doc to take him out. He did it all through the second quarter and all through the fourth quarter. I'm talking about from start to finish of the fourth quarter because DeAndre winds up shooting 14 free throws just in the fourth quarter alone and made six of them to his credit, which was, was pretty good. Now, I can't argue with the numbers that you just presented to me. The numbers scream that you should foul them as many times as you can. But my point to you is a psychological point. I'm just talking about my San Antonio Spurs here. Coach Popovich, to me, 
is sending a message all through the second quarter and all through the fourth quarter, hey, you guys aren't quite good enough to beat them on your own. We need to take advantage of the loophole in the rules to the max. And after a while, I think you plant seeds in the heads of your players that we need this, this edge. We need to keep sending that guy to the free throw line because we can't beat him straight up. And you know what? In the end of that game, I don't know if you got to see it, Stephen A., or at least the highlights, Chris Paul made two huge clutch jumpers, and Jamal Crawford made the clutchest, hugest shot of the game, a three-point shot when Tony Parker left him in the corner. So I, I give it up to the Clippers because they flat out won the basketball game, although my guys turned it over six times in the fourth quarter. Ginobili turned it over three more times. You, you live and you die by Ginobili, and this year they're mostly dying by Ginobili. But in the end, I think you're sending the wrong message to your team when you overutilize that strategy. Well, I don't know if you're sending the wrong message to your team because these are champions. Uh, they're five-time champions for a reason. Popovich knows what he's doing. And some of the experts will always tell you it's about exploiting somebody's weakness. And the Clippers' clear deficiency slash weakness is uh, DeAndre Jordan at the free throw line. It's a reason, and, and, and not just at the free throw line, but just as a perimeter threat as well. This guy, you can't give him the ball. Skip, understand the magnitude of somebody who can't hit free throws. When you can't hit free throws, we can't call your number because when all else fails, somebody's going to foul you. If you give DeAndre Jordan the ball in the post, everybody knows that he's going to probably dunk it on you. His post game needs to improve, no doubt. But one of the reasons we don't see much of a post game from him is because when he's thrown the ball, the you know, j just just by habit, the instant, you know, the instinctual reaction is to foul him because you know chances are he's going to miss free throws. And so because of it, if it slows down your offense, it disrupts your flow, and more importantly, it doesn't make you as efficient as you could potentially be because you're not converting any points. Why? Because he's not making his free throws. So as a result, you go out there and you get Spencer Hawes because Spencer Hawes came to you as a guy that had a perimeter shot, even though he's only averaging about 17 points a game, of seven points a game, rather, and he's missed about 20 games. His job was to come there and to give you some type of a threat in the post area so you could sit DeAndre down and utilize him with Blake Griffin. But now with Blake Griffin being out, you have to utilize DeAndre Moore. We know that he's averaging 13.9 rebounds, and he's averaging almost two and a half blocks a game. League leaders, league leaders in both categories, and how formidable he is. But he's such a liability because of his free throw shooting that it hinders everything you're trying to do. And I can't knock any team for taking advantage of that because that's what winning is all about, taking advantage of other people's weaknesses. Okay, but Coach Popovich, and I know you love him, but I'm going to be objective about Coach and, and my Spurs. He said after the game, I hate this rule or the lack of a rule here. I, Stephen A., I hate the way he overutilizes it because I don't see other coaches do it to this extent. Maybe you've seen somebody, I have not. To continue to do it all through a second and a fourth quarter is way over well, the line. But listen to what you're saying. Me. And again, but if, listen. Yeah, but listen to what listen no. to what you're saying, Skip. Other coaches don't do what he does, but other coaches ain't five-time champions. He is. Okay. If you're the defending champion in the National Basketball Association and you're playing an, a, a rival in the West who beat you by 20 points recently on your home court, by golly, just play man to man. Just just man up and show them you can beat them. It would mean a lot more to that basketball team. If I were on that team, maybe you would feel differently. I'd be saying after a while, come on, Pop, give us a chance to win the game here. You, you shatter the flow of the game. You shatter the rhythm of the game. It's, it's like you, you, you turn it into a gimmicky game. And I realize the numbers say that's the way you should fly. 
I, I think you took the heart and soul out of your basketball team, your championship well, team yeah. last night. Well, listen, you listen. If this, if, if if they were playing the Clippers in the finals, you'd have a point. But last time I checked, they beat the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals. If they played the Clippers in the Western Conference Finals, you'd have a point. Last time I checked, they beat the Oklahoma City Thunder in the Conference Finals. So they're clearly beating the teams that they need to beat. This is just a strategy they employ because what did it ever occur to you that what Popovich really wants is for Doc Rivers to take DeAndre Jordan out the game, force him to put somebody else in that. the game? All right, then. So if that's the case, well, then if Doc yeah. Rivers doesn't capitulate, then you use this to your advantage. I can't knock, a, I can't knock any coach or any team playing within the rules to maximize whatever advantage that they can get. That's what winning is about. That's what winning is about. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Doc Rivers won the basketball game last night. Listen, so, way to go, Doc. Nobody Tip hates nobody nobody hates it more than me because you know that no one hates intentional walks in baseball more than me. We pay our money, pay $35 for parking, drop another 30 on on some soda and some popcorn yep. and hot dogs and all that stuff. Go in there. I went to Yankee mm. Stadium to watch Barry Bonds and got and Barry watched Bonds. him get yep. walked. Uh, could you imagine how ticked I off know. I was? But they say it's tradition, it's the rules. They don't complain about it in baseball. What we complain about it in basketball for? Let's leave it there. Uh, mention. They do complain about it in baseball, but go ahead. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, DeAndre